In this video, we're going to be taking a look on pages PowerPoint 62 and 63 in which we're going to insert a table. As you create your presentation, you may have some information that would look best organized in rows and columns. For example, if you want to compare the basic details of different train accommodations side by side, a table is ideal for this type of information. Once you have created a table, two new tabs, the Table Tools Design tab and the Table Tools Layout tab, appear on the ribbon. You can use the commands on the table tabs to apply color styles, change cell borders, add cell effects, add rows and columns to your table, adjust the size of cells, and align text in the cells. Taking a look now at step one on page PowerPoint 62, it tells us that we want to right click slide four in the thumbnails pane, so we may need to scroll up and go up to slide four, but we want to right click um, slide four and then we want to click on new slide on the shortcut menu then we want to click on the title placeholder and then we want to type in accommodations now we have a new slide with the title and content layout that has appeared and now with the new title of accommodations now in step two it tells us that we want to click the insert table uh, icon which is right here and then we have the insert table dialog box that appears and then we want to click the number of columns down until uh, or down once until we see four so we want to have four columns and then it tells us that we want to click the number of rows up arrow twice until four appears so we want to have four rows and four columns. Then we will click our OK button. Now a formatted table with four columns and four rows appears on the slide and the Table Tools Design tab opens up on the ribbon. Now the table has a total of 16 cells and the insertion point is in the first cell of the table and is ready to accept text. In step three, it tells us that we want to insert in text, first of all, by typing classic. Then we press our tab key and type in deluxe. And you will find out that this is very similar to inputting in information in the Excel window when we were inputting in uh, information for our chart. Then hit your tab key and then type in luxury. Press your tab key and then type in business. And then press your tab key again. Of course, a quick tip, press the tab key when the insertion point is in the last cell of the table. Uh, on there and it will create a new row and of course you'll notice that the text you type appears in the top four cells of the table and pressing the tab key moves the insertion point to the next cell now remember pressing enter moves the insertion point to the next line in the same cell now in step four it tells us to in, uh, the enter the rest of the table information as shown on figure c13 which is on page powerpoint 63 so this tells us that underneath the classic we want to open glass coach then for the deluxe semi-private suite hit the tab key and this will be private suite tab key and this will be chartered coaches Then for the sec uh, for the third row here, we're going to have self-guided tours. The deluxe. This will be guided tours. For luxury guided tours. And for the business meetings and events. And then finally, in the last row on here, classic is dining coach for the deluxe dining coach for the luxury it's meal plan included and for the business it's catered meals and of course the table we now notice would look a little bit better if it was formatted a little bit differently so in step five once we've then put in all this information to the table it tells us that we want to click on the more button in the table styles group and of course our table styles group is right here 
And our More button is this little line with the down pointing arrow. And of course, if we put our mouse pointer over it, it tells us there's the More. And of course, we now notice that we have some different table styles, and it has them broken down into different categories. So it tells us that we want to scroll to the bottom of the gallery, and we want to go down to the dark. And it tells us that we want to select the dark one accent three, which is this blue one right here. Once again, there it is. It's the dark style one accent three. We're going to click on that. And of course, we'll notice that the background and text color changes to reflect the table style that we have applied. Now in step six, it tells us that we want to click the classic cell in the table and then we're going to click the table tools layout tab so we're switching our tab up here to the layout tab and then we're going to click the select button in the table group of course the table group is over here and we're going to click on the select button and we have three options we have select table select column and select row and in this case we want to click on select row and that has selected that entire row and then we can go through and we can click the center button in the alignment group so here we have our alignments here and we're going to click on the center button here and when we do this the text in the top row is now centered horizontally in each cell of course as well a quick tip we can change the height or the width of any table cell by dragging its border then on step seven it tells us that we're going to click the select button again and then this time we're going to click on select table now that we have this we've got the entire table selected then we're going to click on the align bottom button in the alignment group and that is right over here and there's the align bottom we click on this and what that has done is the text in the entire table has now been aligned at the bottom within each cell. Now on step 8 it tells us that we want to click the table tools design tab so we're going to switch back to the design tab and then we're going to click on the effects button which is in the table styles group and then we're going to point to cell bevel and then we're going to go to where we find convex so you can point to each one of these and it will tell you the name of it but this is the one that we're looking for right here which is in the second row so we click on this and now we notice that the 3d effect makes the cells of the table stand out and the table would look better in a different place on the slide now, of course as well a quick tip to change the cell color behind the text we can click on the shading list arrow in the table styles group and then we can choose our color on step 9 it tells us that we want to place our mouse pointer over the top edge of the table so it appears to look like this the four headed arrow with the mouse pointer and then it tells us to drag the table straight down as shown in figure C4 so we're just going to drag this down where the top part kind of lines up with these little lines right here so we're just dragging that straight down and then we want to click on a blank area of the slide and then we want to save our presentation now of course we notice that the slide looks better with more space between the table and the title slide now on the bottom of page PowerPoint 63 it talks to you a little bit about drawing tables and of course to choose the slide where you want a table um, on there you can click the table button in the tables group on the insert tab and then you can click on draw a table and when that happens the pointer is going to turn into a little pencil then you can drag to define the boundaries of the table in the area of the slide where you want the table now a dotted outline appears as you draw next you draw to create the rows and columns of your table then you can click the table tools design tab on the ribbon and then click the draw tables button in the draw borders group and then draw lines for the columns and rows now be sure to draw within the boundary line of the table now you can also create a table by clicking the table button in the tables group on the insert tab and then dragging your mouse pointer over the table grid to 
create a table. And that includes the information that's on pages PowerPoint 62 and 63. You're ready to move on to the next and final video in which we're going to insert and format WordArt.